Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon my dear all friends It's me Ahmad Rashid Ahmad Zay again with a new English lecture Starting with the name of most merciful and most compassionate Before starting our today's lecture I want you all to like and subscribe my youtube channel Today the lecture is about class, the 12th class Let's uh, define class simply That subject plus a verb or verb phrase is called class It means when subject comes plus a verb or verb phrase And they uh, give a complete meaning or incomplete meaning They are called class so, in order to complete the complete and incomplete meaning, we're going to divide clauses into sections or two parts, which are called dependent clauses and independent clauses. What are dependent clauses or subordinating clauses? We can also call dependent clause a subordinating clause. Dependent clauses are those clauses that they cannot stand independently. What does it mean? It means they do not give a complete meaning. So, in order to give a complete meaning, they need an independent clause. They need an independent clause to complete their meaning. <coughs> and there is a note for dependent clauses. How can we simply um, analyze that what are dependent clauses? Dependent clauses are introduced by a relative pronoun, for example, what, whom, who, which, and ADC. And also, it can uh, introduce by a subordinating conjunction, for example, if, although, and because. Let's have an example. Wherever you want. In this sentence, wherever is a relative pronoun, and this is a dependent uh, clause. Well, it is a dependent clause because it has an incomplete meaning. The meaning is not complete. So, in order to complete its meaning, it needs an independent clause. It needs an independent clause. An independent clause can give a complete meaning, and also it can complete the meaning of a dependent clause. For example, you can say it is an independent clause. It has a complete meaning. And let's complete the meaning of this independent clause as well. You can set wherever you want. It has, at now on, it, is, uh, it gives a complete sense. It gives a complete meaning. And let's talk about the types of dependent clauses. Uh, dependent clause are also broken into three sections, which are called noun clause, adjective clause, and also adverb clause. What are noun clause? Noun clause, when group of words comes together and act as a noun, and also they can act as a subject in the uh, sentences, on the tongue we can call them, they are noun clauses. And noun clauses are introduced by whatever, whomever, whether, which, what, uh, and also that. They are called noun clauses. For example, Whoever thought of this idea is a genus. In this place, whoever that uh, thought of this idea is group of words that they are acting as a subject and also as a noun in this sentence, they are called noun clauses. And what are adjective clauses? Adjective clause when a clause, uh, uh, same like an adjective, uh, modify a noun or a pronoun, or when a clause function as an adjective, they are called adjective clause. An adjective clause are introduced with what, when, which, and also that, and etc. For example, Here's a sentence, we're going to the park, we're going to the park that I like the best. And this sentence, that I like the best is the adjective class. Why? Because it has a subject, it has a verb, and also the best is something which modified the park in this uh, uh, class. Okay, let's talk about the third type of uh, dependent class, which is called adverb class. Adverb class is a, uh, is a, a dependent class when a class do not have any subject or verb, and when a clause introduced by a subordinating conjunction like unless, like if, like although, like because, on that time we can call those kind of clauses as adverb clause. Let's have an example. If you pay your bills on time, you can have a good credit store. In this sentence, if you pay your bills on time, it is a adverb clause. It is an adverb clause because in this place we don't have any subject. Okay. <clears throat> Let's have uh, a note of punctuation or using the comma properly uh, between clauses. When we have two clauses, dependent and independent clause, um, now how should we use comma uh, between them? When a dependent clause comes first and precedes the independent clause, we need to use comma between them. But when independent clause comes first and it precedes the dependent clause, on that time there is no need for comma, we should not use any comma. Okay, bye, and girls. It was our today's lecture about clause and also types of clauses and also type of dependent clause. I hope you enjoyed and learned some new things. In case of any question, any complaints, or any suggestion, you can uh, text me and also you can comment me. Wish you all the best. Take care of yourself. Be blessed.